Good morning, everyone. My name is Chetna Sharma. Hope you're having a great day. Today, I'm going to present on Fibonacci sequence. Before diving into the presentation, let's talk about maths. So I woke up this morning with 10 alarm clocks. Sorry. That's maths. I made my coffee. How much milk I put in, how much sugar I put in. That's maths again. I turned on my shower. How hot I want the water to be. That's again maths. So maths is everywhere. So in light of the wonder that is mathematics, let's begin the presentation. You guys are going to help me figure out what the next number is going to be. First we have zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight. What's the next number? Thirteen. Yeah, that's the right answer. 13 and then we have 21. Do you guys see some pattern here? Yeah, the pattern is that these are the Fibonacci numbers. Each Fibonacci number is the sum of the preceding two ones. So now we're going to look at the history of Fibonacci numbers. Leonardo of Pisa, whose nickname was Fibonacci, hence the name, he was the one who gave us the Fibonacci numbers. He, in his book, Libar Abaci, he solved the famous the rabbit problem, which is why how we came to know about the Fibonacci numbers. Now, Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. Whenever we divide two numbers, and when the answer comes out to be 1.618, that is called the golden ratio, which is represented by the Greek letter phi. And as we keep on dividing Fibonacci numbers, the answer gets closer and closer to golden ratio. That is how, that is how we know the Fibonacci sequence follows the golden ratio. Golden rectangle. A golden rectangle is a rectangle whose dimensions equal the Fibonacci numbers. A golden rectangle has small squares in it that also that also follow the Fibonacci pattern. Now I'm going to show you a visual representation of what I just said. So applications in nature, plants. So first we have the sunflower, and here it's, here is the Fibonacci sequence. Now we have the cauliflower, then we have the artichoke, and then we have the pineapple. Now who told these plants to follow the Fibonacci sequence? Was it God? Was it some mystic power? The answer is pretty simple. Like even, if you count the, even if you count the spirals on, the Fibonacci, on those pine cones, they follow the Fibonacci pattern as well. It's because it's the most efficient way to pack as many spores or as many seeds in the least amount of space that is possible. Now we're going to look at some examples of Fibonacci sequence in animals. There's a nautilus shell. Here we can see. And then there's a tail of seahorse. See how it's pretty beautiful and fascinating in architecture. You know that our eyes are so accustomed to seeing buildings that have the golden ratio that if we see a building that doesn't follow the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio, we see it as a little bit different. It's not wrong with the building. It's just that our eyes are accustomed to it. Some of the examples are Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, Taj Mahal in India, Notre Dame in Paris. Now Fibonacci sequence in the modern world. Financial analysis. A lot of the traders often expect their, their losses or profits at the, in this pattern where it is marked by the golden ratio. Fibonacci sequence in the medicine. Here we have the graph that depicts the golden ratio approximations that is shown in the Fibonacci sequence. And here it is the EKG of a human heart. This EKG resembles the first part of this graph. So or even a human heartbeat follows the Fibonacci sequence. Now, so you guys have been so patient with me, we're going to listen to music. I'm not gonna sing. I, want, I don't wanna hurt your ears. <laughs> so, yeah. Pretty cool, right? These beats follow the Fibonacci sequence. So in the end, all I can say is Fibonacci sequence is everywhere around us, even if you don't recognize it. So I encourage you that whenever you go out for a walk or a stroll, see if you can figure out the pattern. Thank you so much.